And if you don't mind me asking, how much do you make? Actually, I do mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, my overall total compensation is in the range of around so going into college, how did you graduate in two years? Was that the plan? <laughs> so once you graduated, did you start working right away? I didn't want to also go into the job market at 19. I didn't feel like I was ready. And I think they actually wanted me to start right away, but I was like, no, I'm in school, I'm doing my master's. So what kind of advice would you give to other people that are in a situation where they're struggling to get a software engineering job? If you're copying a GitHub, if you're copying something GPT spewed out, you're probably not gonna get a job. Hey guys, so today I have a very special guest on my channel, Sajad. He actually graduated from Georgia Tech at the age of 19, and he's now a software engineer in the industry, and he also finished a master's degree in one year. So we're gonna go ahead and talk about his journey and learn more about how you can do something like that too. So yeah, do you wanna tell us a little bit about your journey and why you decided to get into computer science? Yeah, so my background in terms of getting into computer science really goes back to grade school. I think I was always interested in math, very analytical, problem-solving type way of thinking, particularly calculus, algebra. I always just love solving problems, solving for X, you know? Yeah. And then translate that going into high school, I dabbled with computer math and AP computer science. Mm -hmm. And something that I realized is computer science is all just problem solving. Mm -hmm. Similar to math where you handwrite and solve a problem, the computer, you write code to solve problems quicker and at high scale. And so once I realized that, I loved it. I was like, with the ability of writing code, English that looks gibberish, mm -hmm. you get to create these cool applications and also have a lot of impact, right? Like code and software that I write here in America, I can impact someone in Australia, in New Zealand, in India, mm -hmm. all across the world. And just that idea was really mind boggling to me. And I did like a mini like technical internship at the end of 12th grade and i was like okay this is definitely the field for me so then going into college i decided to major in computer science awesome that's really cool so going into college how did you graduate in two years was that the plan <laughs> yeah so that was the plan because okay. i knew from high school around 12th grade i strategically picked my ap courses in high school ap advanced placement as well as dual enrollments which mm -hmm. are courses that are integrated with your community college. And I handpicked them to be pretty much optimized to cover my general education requirements mm -hmm. in college. So for example, I did my English courses, I did psychology courses, I did French courses. I had all my ed general education requirements summed up to about 60 credits in terms of AP and dual moments that translated into two years at Georgia Tech because 60 credits there's about 120 credits required to graduate mm -hmm. i had six credits done from high school mm -hmm. so only two years left plus two years of focused computer science courses at georgia tech that's amazing so you were very strategic going into college yeah and very then... strategic going into plus during okay because you only have limited time mm -hmm. in terms of like your degree and in terms of optimizing prerequisites tracks and all that stuff mm -hmm. you have to be very decisive what you take during university as well gotcha okay so you always knew that you wanted to go the computer science route yeah so once you graduated did you start working right away so once i graduated from my bachelor's i decided to go back to my master's okay uh for a couple of reasons so the first internship i had worked at the summer of my freshman year was at amazon and I did my project there. However, I just didn't really find a fit there. Like I wanted to dabble in with another company, explore different things before I went full time. Mm -hmm. And so I decided I did another internship that following summer between my bachelor's and master's. Mm -hmm. I decided to go back to my master's because I wanted to see that. I didn't want to also go into the job market at 19. I didn't feel like I was ready. So having the master's, it also helps out later on with like salary and like mm -hmm. some negotiation and all that. I decided to do my master's instead of going full time. Awesome. And was a one year master's program also the plan? So that became the plan once I got to Georgia Tech. Okay. So actually master's at first wasn't on my radar. Mm -hmm. I knew I would graduate early, but I wasn't necessarily sure what I would do right after. Mm -hmm. But once I joined Georgia Tech, I found out that they had this BSMS program, mm -hmm. which effectively lets people do a one year master's. Typically it's a four plus one program, but for me it was a two plus one program. Mm -hmm. The premise of this program is your master's, you can take some of those courses during your undergrad at a higher level. Okay. So like, for example, I did a specialization in machine learning. I took the machine learning courses during my bachelor's at the master's level. 
Okay. Um, wow. And so I was taking it with master's students, even though I was an undergrad. And by doing so, I got credit for my bachelor's and my master's. Wow. So by the time I started my master's program, I had 40% of it already done. So I had only six classes left, three classes per semester, got it in one year. Wow, so you were playing like the video game of life. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, up, optimization, you know? Yeah, exactly, yeah. super cool. Okay, so after your master's degree, did you get a job right away or what did that process look like? Yeah, after my master's degree, I got a job right away. Uh, the internship I did following my bachelor's, mm -hmm. I had a really good relationship. I loved the project that I was working on. Mm -hmm. And as like an intern, I got a project that actually got productionized, which is pretty rare to find. Mm -hmm. um, and it was so much so that it wasn't just a summer internship, it extended into the fall semester. So I was working part time into the year. Uh -huh. And then after all of that, they gave me a return offer. Mm -hmm. And I think they actually wanted me to start right away. But I was like, no, I'm in school, I'm doing my master's. And so as soon as I finished my master's, I just went back to that company. Wow, that's super cool. Yeah. And if you don't mind me asking, how much do you make? Actually, I do mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, so my overall total compensation, which mm -hmm. includes salary, base, and stock, mm -hmm. is in the range of around 250 to 300K. Okay, yeah. awesome. And how old are you? I am currently 23 years old. Wow, that is so cool. And I Thank feel like you. that's an inspiration for all people that are graduating and Thanks. looking for a software engineering job right now. Yeah, yeah. I would say definitely don't go for it only for the money, mm -hmm. but definitely it's a source of inspiration, mm -hmm. helps pays the bills. <laughs> for sure, yeah. Okay, before we get any further, I want to introduce you to today's sponsor, UiPath. UiPath is a leading enterprise automation and AI platform that can help you speed up your workflow using agentic capabilities. Eventually, everyone's going to have to know how to use use and set up an AI agent themselves. So today I wanted to show you a quick example of how you can easily do that with UiPath. Okay, so let's say we have a Python script that we wanted to use to run a smart, scalable AI agent. Well, UiPath coded agents lets you write agents entirely in Python and deploy them with one CLI command. Let's take a look. So this is what the homepage looks like for UiPath. We're actually gonna go to GitHub because UiPath actually has a bunch of agents that you can use as a template or as a sample just to try it out on your own. But here, I'm going to use this calculator agent. Oh, and if you click into the graph Python file, you can actually see the logic behind this agent. Again, really simple agent, but this gives you a structure to help you build your own agents. So here, of course, we're going to use two values, A and B, and then the operator is plus. So we're going to find the sum of those two values in this example. And if you want to test it out quick, I'm just going to run the agent and it looks like it was successful. So I added A is 10, B is five, the operator is a plus, and our result is 15. All right, so we're going to go and publish it. and. There it is, there's a process for the calculator agent. We can actually just create a job out of it as well. And if I go ahead and press start, this is how you can set that up. So I've added the calculator agent process. And then remember, you need parameters. So we'll need two values and then an operator. So let's just say seven, six, and then we'll do the plus operator and we'll go ahead and start that job. Okay, so if we go ahead and click on the job, we can see the details with our inputs and the output is 13, which is the correct number. And you can make your own agents as well, which is the coolest part. That was pretty cool, right? And another cool thing is that UiPath works well with Langchain, Langgraph, and Llama Index. It's orchestrated with enterprise grade logging, governance, and human approvals. It's super intuitive to use and very developer friendly too. So what are you waiting for? Sign up for your free account now. The link is in the description below. And bonus for all you developers, Developers, you can explore the UiPath GitHub repos and turn your own Python script into an enterprise grade agent. So go do that today and leave a comment below on what you end up building. So what kind of advice would you give to other people that are in a situation where they're struggling to get a software engineering job? If you're struggling, there are two folds of ways I would go about it. One is identifying, are you struggling with getting an interview or passing an interview? If you're struggling with getting an interview, you have to really work on your application. And that comes in, once again, two folds. You need to network and get referrals. So having strong connections, warm connections, LinkedIn in your way, getting referrals from hiring managers, going to as many events as possible just to establish yourself. Then is actually building yourself up. 
or actually I would start with building yourself up mm -hmm. first. I see a lot of people throwing on coding projects onto their resume. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you're copying a GitHub, if you're copying something GPT spewed out, you're mm -hmm. probably not going to get a job. But creating impactful projects is what's going to separate you. I'll give an example. So if you're in a university, you're a computer science student, maybe there's a club out there, a non-technical extracurricular or like a debate club, business club. Maybe you could build a website for them, build a dashboard for them, do something that'll help them out and quantify your metrics. All of a sudden, you throw that onto your resume, you have a clear skill set, a project, plus clear metrics of how you improved an organization. A recruiter looks at that and is like, hey, maybe they could do that at our company because yeah. that's what they exactly want to see. You that's know? awesome. And then uh, passing an interview is a whole other thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, so <laughs> I would start with that. Yeah, no, that sounds great. I think that's really good advice because I think people probably follow that generic rule set and then they don't end up getting the results that they're yeah, looking for. Yeah, just throwing random projects isn't doing you any good. Right, for sure. Yeah. So now with the changing landscape and AI kind of coming into the picture, what advice would you give for people there? Should they start learning how to use AI tooling? Should they start using AI in their projects? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think starting with asking GPT to spew out code is just mm -hmm. the basic level. So I recently started dabbling with this one tool called Warp. This isn't an ad for them, but I absolutely love them. So okay. one of the biggest things that I struggled with in computer science was understanding the terminal. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. uh, like Linux commands and a, like LS, CD, like why is it even called that? You know, for sure. So this tool called Warp, it opens up a terminal, but you can communicate it in English. Okay. Like set up this Python project for me. Okay, does your system have Python? Okay, let's download Python. Let's install it. Cool. Let's set up your environments. Oh, NPM issues, whatever. I hate M NPM issues. I feel like sometimes when I try to resolve them on overflow, I receive like Stack Overflow, I have more issues after that. Yep. But this handles everything. And if a command fails, it reruns another command. Wow. Amazing. And you can set up a project just like that. And then because it's also, it's integrated with like the Claude, the, the, the GPT and all that, OpenAI, it, can actually write the code for you as well. well so you can have end-to-end -end project in literal minutes. Things that used to take weeks can be done in minutes. All those projects that I described to you before that you could do with like technical extracurriculars, you can build in literal minutes. So wow, that's start. amazing. Yeah. Okay, I'm definitely gonna use yeah. that now for sure. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. So just going back into the process before you got a job, how did the interviews look like? So the interviews for my own like internship as well as entry level job role, a lot of them were leap code esque, mm -hmm. uh, particularly for my Amazon. I had a typical hash map priority queue problem. I think it was like K nearest neighbors. That was my final round interview. Mm -hmm. um, and it was very funny because I had just stumbled upon like this article on like priority queues right before. So it was oh, like, really perfect. nice to have it. Yep. Um, for other interviews, I've had what I would call like domain-esque knowledge. Mm -hmm. Like for example, one interview, it was JavaScript has this filter function in which it like matches things. Like it, JavaScript has a lot of iterator functions. Mm -hmm. Code the internal implementation of it. So I put JavaScript on my resume. Did I actually know it? It was being put to the test. Wow. So yeah. make sure whatever language you put on your resume is more than hello world. <laughs> For sure, yeah. You uh, actually know the language yeah. in and out. That's a good point. Yeah, because I see sometimes resumes that list 10 different languages, yeah. even if they've just- You definitely don't know all that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Super cool. So are there any closing thoughts that you want to give to someone who is, you know, just a computer science student that wants to start in the industry and they don't really know where to go after college? Right, right. I'll say this. So the landscape of the tech market is very different compared to when we both mm -hmm. first got into the field. I think nowadays, big tech and getting that elusive high paying salary isn't as big of a dream for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I think because of the proliferation of AI tools, I've seen a lot of students who are like, I wanna do a startup. I wanna create an AI startup. I think a million dollar AI startup has become the new big tech dream for a lot of these students. And I love it, mm -hmm. but be very cautious, right? Sure. Like it's not as easy, like 90% of startups fail, I think, Yeah. right? So be very cautious about what you get into. Make sure you understand your product very well. Make sure you understand your distribution strategy very well. And honestly, just start if you have the risk and able to do it, definitely, like, why not? I would also say start while you're in college, especially for a lot of these startup things, when you don't have bills to worry about. You just have a lot more playing ground. Plus, you have a lot of people that you can bounce ideas off of. You have professors who have years of experience in computers who can like look at a lot of the stuff. 
But I would say start in college and see if that's something you want to continue before you get into the market. And then once you get in, maybe go the big tech job route, depending on your whole like financial situation. But I'd say use these AI tools and create awesome stuff. Awesome. That's really great advice. Yeah. And I think with that, we're going to conclude today's interview. You can actually find Sajad on Instagram, YouTube, and LinkedIn. He is all over the place. You probably honestly have already seen him, um, but I'll link everything in the description below as well. So thank you so much for coming on today. Thanks for having me. Yeah, awesome. of course. Cool. cool. All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs>